Hi all, welcome. My name is uh, Sarah Perry. I'm a lecturer in cultural heritage management in the uh, Department of Archaeology here and I run the Department of Digital Heritage and Archaeological Information Systems program. So I do a lot of digital related um, uh, work and I've been very fortunate to have uh, been able to collaborate with Tom Smith over the last few years. Uh, in experimenting with different types of media application in the classroom. So I am going to take you quickly through some of the projects that I've been doing both with Tom and somewhat on my own, <laughs> with Tom's support <laughs> in most cases. Um, and then I think Tom is going to um, chime in uh, after uh, with some more uh, elaborate and uh, wider ranging projects uh, that he's done in partnership with other departments. Uh, so I'll introduce you to some of the digital media centered um, modules and projects that I've been uh, doing usually with Tom's help. I'm going to talk to you about some of the student feedback uh, that I've received uh, on those experiences and then uh, Tom will come in, hopefully that will take about 25 minutes and then we'll have the rest of the session for um, discussion uh, and queries and helping to talk through some of the anxieties that often come with uh, this type of uh, work. Uh, so um, I've been using uh, digital tools in my teaching and research for a very long time now and at York in particular I've been using them uh, in a variety of ways to produce online uh, displays with students, different types of conversational forums to create uh, videos uh, so we've been deploying Blogger and WordPress blogs. Uh, we've been using Pinterest, uh, making YouTube films and most recently uh, I've been testing out Medium uh, dot com uh, for one-off web publications. Uh, I've been using uh, the Google suite of tools, in particular Google Groups, Google Docs, Google Forms, and Google Drawing to do collaborative forms of conversation, uh, doodling, uh, data gathering, and general synthesis of ideas both inside and outside of the classroom. been using um, Twitter and Hangouts on Air uh, to connect to the professional community, connect the students and myself to the professional community outside of the classroom and then we've also been doing different types of exhibition in physical spaces using digital um, media and I have been evaluating all of the work through student interviews, through, through focus groups, student surveys, uh, reflective reports, module assessments and comments that are coming from other people as well as my own personal critique and that um, important part about all of this is I think the argument for doing such work is that it creates a nice space between interpretation, hypothesis testing and building of technical uh, skills. Uh, and it, all of my work has been motivated by a variety of different um, factors. I won't go into um, all of the details, but uh, they, there's some, some points here on the, the slide. I think the most interesting part is that there's often this belief that um, the students are coming in as kind of digital natives with an expertise that nobody else um, has or that's more advanced than their own and I've found exactly the opposite of huge tentativeness on the part of the student um, community to engage with uh, some of these tools even though they're also calling for different types of assessment and forms of practice in the classroom that resonate more with their everyday lives and that connect them more, more with the outside um, community. So hence I've been playing around with some of these different tools which I'll tell you about now and weaving it together with having critical conversations with students about the ethics of using these types of tools, what it means to actually do some of this work on corporate media platforms where it's unclear what the data um, are being used for in the long term and where that data, uh, uh, those data are going and hence also the consequences then of the public presentation of yourself and ideas and how you keep yourself safe amongst all of it. So by far the most um, uh, the most meaningful media that I've used in the classroom uh, has been Twitter and I've just put up there one representative quote. <laughs> um, 
uh, that many students have said to me in various forms. So a male um, master student after taking one of my modules said, I never really went on Twitter prior to class, and to be honest, I was kind of avoiding it like the plague, as do most people I know who haven't been dragged onto it through your class. <laughs> Um, it actually got me reading uh, news related to heritage and archaeology, which previously um, I'd uh, never bothered with ever. I knew more than I did uh, prior to studying it or even working in various positions. That definitely raised awareness quite substantially. Twitter built understanding and actually widened my own interest. It leads you towards things. It gives you interesting points to think about and look up. You find something interesting and then you follow up with it. So I started deploying Twitter in a very simple uh, way. I would, before the module started, ask students via a uh, message sent through the BLE to sign up for Twitter. And I provided them uh, with a guide, um, just a few pages of information uh, about how to set up um, Twitter and some things to think about when you're using it, uh, which is something that I can provide to anyone who's listening if they're interested to use it um, themselves. And I set up a hashtag, or I just identified a hashtag for us to use. So if you're keen on looking to see how some of these have been used, um, we've been using York CHN2 most recently, so there's quite a few tweets that you'll find online right now um, uh, pertaining to that. Uh, and then I've asked, I asked the students to follow a series of people relevant to the subject matter of the module, and then to just go ahead and engage as they please. Uh, with it. I don't assess the Twitter use and I don't force the Twitter um, use. Uh, I trust that students will uh, test it out on their own, um, give it a go, and uh, see what happens uh, next. So uh, I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, and I started using it about three or four years ago now, and I continue to use it because there's been such great success with it. Um, students, there's not been 100% participation, uh, which I never expected and would never um, push for. Um, but uh, there was very substantial participation in most classes, and students ended up finding their own communities of practice, sharing resources uh, with an one another. They communicated directly with professionals, and some have gone on to get jobs and actually act as social media coordinators for the for professional organizations in paid roles now. They've created new um, hashtags on their own, and in some cases, and there's an example here of the free archaeology hashtag, which was coined by a student of mine from a few years ago, which has sparked off a huge intellectual debate across the, the discipline and led to a series of publications and edited um, journal issues on the subject area, which is basically about the, the problems with free labor. Uh, in archaeology. Uh, so Twitter has been incredibly successful, uh, and I can't sing its praises enough uh, in classroom-based uh, work. And we've been using, uh, for teach, doing this um, little presentation, Tom and I, the um, Twitter hashtag CNCC16. So uh, if any of you are on Twitter right now and are interested in uh, testing this out, um, please uh, tweet us on CNCC16 and we'll check it out. And otherwise, even if you're not on Twitter, some of the things we'll come back to at the end of this session are listed uh, below. So if you could start having a think about these, um, we can chat about them as our session uh, comes to a close. So what are your greatest fears using digital media in the classroom? What are your greatest hindrances in terms of applying them to your teaching, research, and professional work? What technologies are you already applying to good effect and how? And are there any specific technologies that you'd like guidance on? And Tom and I um, can address those in more detail as we go, uh, go along. Uh, so just to quickly review a few of the other projects um, beyond Twitter that I've been using uh, in the classroom, all of these projects have been supported by the university. Um, some, in some cases, as in the one I'll just about, I'm just about to talk to you about, the university has supplied worksheets through the e-learning department on how to use YouTube, how to do basic video uh, shooting and production. 
uh, how to deploy Movie Maker, the video editing tool, um, how to do various forms of recording, etc. And also the university has helped to supply equipment, including video cameras and recorders. So for anybody who's hesitant to use these tools, it's been made very easy for me. Um, with the university's help through the e-learning team and we can help to facilitate that access for you too if you're keen. So one of the first things that we've tested out, and there's a case study online if you want to look at it, um, was having students make uh, short films about uh, archaeological sites. Uh, students uh, were introduced to a particular field site. They went on to do a series of things, establish a including establishing a blog where they were talking about their process as they were going along. Um, they prepared a three-minute video on the site that they were working at for display in a museum. They storyboarded it. They worked with the curators um, and then did all of the various video production techniques, including then releasing it uh, into the wild uh, through YouTube and then evaluating uh, all of it. So um, this that we've done that over the past couple of years. And then th last year, I got I wanted to try something new going beyond just uh, the use of YouTube and video editing. And with Tom's help, uh, we've been testing out live code uh, to make mobile apps uh, for archaeological sites. And again, a fairly simple um, process for putting it together. The complicated part is getting the mobile app off, off of your computer and onto uh, the Apple Store or Google Play. Um, but we can tell you more about that if you're interesting, interested in it. Again, um, with the support of the university, it's actually a much simpler process than I would have um, imagined. And I've collected a little bit of feedback um, from students on uh, the impacts of some of the, this work on them, and I'll, without going into too much detail, you can see here um, the level of care and concern that people invested in it. So one of my female undergraduate students, you don't want you, won't, you don't want to produce something that's just going to be, ah, it's okay, you actually want to be, un, like, I'm proud of that. Uh, one of the students talked about how it all made sense. Everything we've done seemed to be done with a purpose. Another spoke about it, learning to communicate with people better. Um, and another spoke about how important it was for her to be able to do this work and experience at first hand. I've also been actively using Google Groups in my teaching and my master's level modules. I have um, nearly 50 students in the module, so one uh, week ahead of our in-class lecture session, I'll post a provocative question uh, on the Google group, and I'll directly enroll all of the students in the Google group and ask them to respond. Again, this depends on trusting the students to participate, and usually they will because they feel the pressure of the other 50 students responding, and so we have some wonderful um, engaged conversations, and you might be able to see on the slide there that in, in each week we'd often have up to 45 posts, meaning pretty much everyone in the class was participating. Um, and we've got, I got some great comments on that Google group because especially those from international audiences would say, I can study outside of the classroom so I can understand 100% what British people are speaking. So for me, I can say what I want to. Others talked about how they could share their opinion with people and they felt very Comment, the comments they got back were very useful. We were getting close, like good friends. They're going to get dialogue, and I thought that's what the aim was, to get people talking before the classroom. So it was, it achieved exactly what I was hoping to. And most recently, um, I've been using medium.com uh, to not only have students talk to one another in the classroom, but to talk to other people outside uh, of the classroom. And here, again, I ask students to work in groups uh, to write a post about a heritage topic of their choice. Uh, the students do will go on to very outward facing jobs. So learning how to communicate with the public right off the bat is incredibly important. Uh, and the exposure that they've gotten through these um, medium.com posts has, has again been hugely 
as successful. And this just happened over the last month, and I've already gotten um, some feedback, which I've mentioned, which I've reprinted here, where the students have said they thought the the um, they thought that the project generated thought and critique, which they were very impressed by, a great combination of creativity and experimentation. We did combine this activity of producing a medium.com post with using the Google group. And so students also talked about having great to have the Google group and medium.com together, which allowed for freedom of discussion on relevant topics. Several students mentioned the creativity aspect, so I really enjoyed the creativity it has allowed me. Others talked about how it made them think differently about heritage, really stimulating to develop new ideas, discussions around heritage, and challenge what I thought of as heritage, and challenge heritage practice. So Tom is going to go into more detail about some of the other um, tools that he's been deploying that he's also helped me to use to, in one case we've been using Google Forms to create surveys, uh, questionnaires, uh, so that we can evaluate the impacts of these uh, media and then we just send out the link to the survey in the same way that you would with Survey Monkey, except for um, my experience is that Google Forms is much more versatile uh, and comprehensive as a tool. Um, we've been using Google Docs to rapidly put together doc reports in class, so multiple people, multiple undergraduate students will be working simultaneously on a document, which I will have given them the general subheadings for, like introduction, discussion, methods, reflection, recommendations, conclusion, and then the students will populate that text. Uh, and we can usually do it in about uh, a few hours, uh, so a full report will be produced in a very quick um, time frame. Uh, and we've been doing it with some of these sessions as well, um, so we can uh, give you a link uh, to that uh, later on if you want to play around with one of the Google Docs we've created uh, in association with this um, uh, workshop. So. Uh, I won't go into the 360 because I'm running out of time, uh, but we've also been using uh, physical spaces to display some of these media, and that's quite an easy um, uh, location to test some of this out into. And so I'll just end with a couple of quotes from uh, the students, which were most meaningful for me because it demonstrated not just that they'd learned something and that there was a little bit of understanding, but that it had a profound effect on them as human beings. Uh, so a few of the students talked about how they felt, this is going to sound really cheesy, but it felt like I learned something about me, you know what I mean? I learned something about what I am. Somebody else said it's something that meant a lot to us. It's just trying to get across how much time and effort and how much love has gone into this project. And another said, I'd like to do something that gives back to a society as a result uh, of participating in these projects. So thanks for listening to me, and I'll pass it over to Tom.